Hello again and welcome to part 2 of the ANET E10 review, the machine Gearbest sent me to check out. I'm gonna list the changes I've done and why I've done them. Starting out with the bed, I had a damage sheet of some built I clone and much prefer glass anyway, so I started cutting one into a suitable size. It should help provide a perfectly flat build surface and make it easier to get prints off. The starting material is a mirror that I bought at IKEA for almost no money at all. It was a long time ago since I last cut glass, so I was definitely rusty at it. Gotta keep those skills fresh if you want perfect result. I also totally missed that these mirrors has a protective plastic on the rear, which also caused some minor issues when trying to snap along the cut. Once I was done cutting it to a decent size, I took a regular file meant for metalwork and chamfered the edges to make sure it wasn't sharp and dangerous to handle. After adding the gloss plate, I quickly realized I wanted an adjustable C-stop to easily change the overall height instead of having to readjust all separate bed knob every time I change the plate and so on. You can see the new bracket here on the left, you adjust the screw attached to the x-axis to change the end stop height. This mostly uses stock hardware, but requires a longer M3 screw for the actual adjustment. Whilst changing to a glass plate, I also started getting annoyed by the overconstrained 4 point leveling system, so I simply removed the screw and made it into a 3 point leveling system. Initially, I worried about if it would be strong enough, but judging from the print quality, it definitely works and is much faster to level. In the long run, I will probably rebuild the underlying plates to properly support it at 3 point. My attention then came to the x-axis belt. There isn't a tensioner from factory and the belt was super slack. With this design, you just rotate the knob to adjust the tension. Quick and easy and requires a little extra hardware. Then came the Y tensioner, which was previously just awful to work with. Similar design as uh, on the x-axis, you rotate the knob to easily and accurately adjust the tension. I made sure to keep it within the original specs, so you don't need to get a longer belt, but you do need to get some screws and nuts. A problem that quickly arose with the new Y tensioner is the weak mounting points for the belt. The bolts would start angling outwards from the tension on the belt and it just was a generally bad design. My design here is quick to print and greatly strengthens the belt system. It mounts width and to the original bolts and locks the belts without any extra hardware needed. Then we have the cable strain relief for the heat bed. I didn't like the idea of constantly having this cable exposed and bending back and forth, so I fixed it along the connector and angled it outwards with this piece. This should hopefully make it survive much longer. All it needs is two short M3 screws. I started noticing some problems with stringing, so I reduced the Bowden tube by a lot. This now lets me get away with uh, around 2mm of retraction and a lot less stringing as a result. The little webbing I get now can easily be removed with a lighter. With these little mods I find it quite a decent machine to work with and the print quality is great. Check the video description for links to all the upgrades I've designed. I hope this little video was helpful and thanks for watching.